What's up guys, Matt here coming at you with another video. Um, this one is on the Losi Nightcrawler. This thing is not very well known and that's kind of what led me to wanting to get one. My father-in-law had seen this and he, he really liked the look of it, thought it looked like it could be pretty solid and we, we run a lot of Losi um, race stuff. I'll show you a couple of my SETEs here. So, you know, I've always been a low C race fan and they've never really gotten into the crawlers that deep. I mean, they had the micros and they've had this night crawler basically forever. But um, this is supposed to be it's the night crawler SE scale edition, I guess, because they threw a gas tank on the back and some shovels and picks and stuff in, in the bed here. It's a scale edition. The looks, uh, you know, depends what you like. They're, to me, I'm not a huge fan of the body, but it does sometimes I catch myself like, you know what, that looks all right. So looks is whatever. You can always change your body and stuff, so really not worried about that. It's really cool that it comes with all of the lights that it has. It has a light bar here, has a light bar here, has a light bar in the rear um tucked up under here it has these little pods here on each side here on each side and it really does light up the trail i'll put a couple shots in here where you can see we were running at night and um well right about is getting dark and it was awesome. Like I really enjoyed the lights on it. So that's cool. At one point, um, I was having trouble with this light bar flickering. I think it was it and the rear lights were like flickering and I thought I'd messed them up. They actually just slightly came unplugged from the receiver there. So that was taken care of. I was kind of bummed out those had quit because that was one of my like favorite things about it is uh, it's, it's cool to run at night. So my thoughts on this is is it a pretty cool like beginner truck for maybe you want to pick something up that's very capable for your kids you don't have to do much to it and maybe they would really like it you know i mean my son loves all these lights and stuff he thinks it's just awesome so that's pretty cool straight out of the box you have all those lights and everything in to me like i'm 100 percent honest it it is really good out of the box. The thing about it is what you get out of the box is pretty much what you're going to get because there's not, I haven't found any aftermarket support for this thing. So like if you want new links, you just got to get low C or kind of make your own. Um, and that's something I'm wanting to do. You can see how bulky these links are. They're huge. They drag a decent amount. They're not horrible, but some man, some arched links on this thing with the flex that it has, it could be very, very capable. Um, you'll see in the running video. I don't want to sit here and talk about it nonstop because I got a lot of running. So I'm going to throw up the uh, running video and I'll kind of uh, talk about some of the things I noticed um, as you're watching it run. That way you're not just sitting here looking at me or looking at the truck and me talking all day. Um, servo is an issue out of the box you'll see that in the video but overall like i'm really impressed straight out of the box one thing was all the shocks were leaking straight out of the box all four of them leaking so i didn't pull those off to do anything with them i'm going to pull them off and try to tighten them up hopefully that's all it is they do really well and oh wow i just turned it on did you see that? It's like magic. Um, <laughs> I guess the switch wasn't all the way off. So if you do it just like that, yeah, the wire back here caught the switch. So that could be an issue if you go the other way, I guess. Anyways, there's the lights. You can see all of the lights. Pretty cool. And uh, we'll get into the running here, and I'll talk a little more about it. So 
So these first few clips, you'll see I'm running stock tires, stock everything the way it was straight out of the box. I wanted to see how this thing did as it comes. Um, I, I was running a um, Z3S pack in it. So um, it is capable of 3S, you can run 2S. And it also, if that's what you prefer, I just most of the time I run 3S in my crawlers. Um, and it, it handled it very well, super smooth. Out of the box, just absolutely unbelievable slow crawl ability. And I think a lot of it has to do with the worm gears. Um, they're just really good for crawling um, because it doesn't come with, you know, high-end electronics, but it is almost as smooth as my sensor to axe system or my Fusion and just does really well overall. The stock wheels and tires are pretty good actually the well i'll say the stock tires stock tires are great honestly on a surface like this um where it's just rock and you know kind of high bite situation very very good um i really liked them on these rocks here um, after this i did hit the creek and got them pretty muddy and they did not do well at all they packed with dirt and mud pretty quick and they just would not clean out um, and just really, really struggled on like hill climbs and, and that sort of thing. But this truck is really not gonna do well on hill climb situations and that sort of thing. It just don't have the overall power for that type thing. But um, for the crawling, like you see here, it does very, very well and has plenty of power for most situations. The flex that this thing has is really just perfect. You'll see here in this, this situation, I'm trying to kind of make a hard left here. And you can see it getting a little wobble going on there. But look at that flex. Like that is really, really good and it kind of holds itself. Now sometimes you will notice, I guess with the, the cab on this body and kind of the body being a little more high, it, it'll get to a point and then it'll just all of a sudden just kind of slowly roll over. Um, so that is a little bit of an issue, but you could lower the body or change the body, like I was saying, and definitely help that out. Or some weight down low, I feel, would really help that also. Right here you'll see I'm trying to show me turn the wheel on the transmitter and the servo is just like barely doing anything. So that stock servo is a major issue out of the box if you're really trying to do much with this thing. I mean, I limped it through the day, but there's a lot of times that if I'd have had a better servo, I would have enjoyed the truck a lot more. It's really the only weak link that I found to it, you know, straight out of the box. Of course it's not. Um, as strong as some others, I would say, but it held up to what I put it through and I didn't break anything on it. Um, and I've, I've had this thing out a few times now and still haven't broken anything on it. And honestly, that's more than I can say for my Gen 8 um, or my Gen 8, as I usually call it. Um, I really liked that thing, but it, I break it like almost every time I take it out. So um, the fact that this thing held up is, uh, 
I guess saying something for its durability anyways. So I feel like um, some weight in front of this would really help it. You'll see here on this climb, it just wasn't quite able to keep the front end down. It kept wanting to raise up and roll on me. And um, so in some of my later clips, I did uh, swap the wheels out with uh, some weights in the front and it did seem to help it quite a bit. So another thing you've probably noticed with this truck is it's pretty loud. Um, those worm gears give off quite a bit of noise, but it's not too annoying in person. Um, it's no worse than my capper is. I don't think I made it straight up. I don't remember. I mean, I think the TRS4 did, but I, I know this one did. You could have fell in the right slot there instead of the wrong one. You've been good. Definitely not. <laughs> It was also completely dry when I did it. There was no water on it at all. And you'll notice that uh, I'm running the what we call tractor tires here, the uh, genius tires. They this they make this thing look like a tractor. So we were joking about that, like. I need to find a little tractor body or something to put on this thing, but um, it did really well. And these wheels had weights in the front, so it kind of helped the uh, hold the front down a little bit. I don't think stock it would have did this climb, not because of the tires really, but because of the, the added weight in the front. But you can see it slow crawls right up that. It's pretty impressive. And I hate to put a clip in here of Mike's capper failing because he made it up this several times actually, but. I just wanted to show, you know, the capability of this thing. Um, you know, our cappers are set up a little more low with l less travel, less flex. So um, this oh, thing man. out of the box, you know, it has tons oh, of flex. So it's able to do some spots like that that are really tough with uh, another rig. And here I was actually trying out another set of tires. And these were brand new tires to start, to start the day. Um, and they are not broke in yet at all. You can see they're pretty hard. They're having trouble kind of pulling up over these rocks. But um, the truck was still able to make it, which is really impressive. And then as it slowly started to get dark is when the lights were a blast um it's just really cool you know lighting up the trail like this and you can see how much light this thing puts off it's insanely bright so i mean you can definitely crawl in the pitch dark with this thing um you know i like the little light bar on the capra and i thought it did really well but man after seeing all the lights on this thing it's just unbelievable the amount of light it puts off
So you can see that this thing can hang. It can hold its own. Like it did a couple of lines that the capper was struggling with, honestly. And it's bone stock other than I swapped out these tires just because I had these KLRs I was wanting to uh, kind of start breaking in. Stock tires are not bad at all. Like they did really, really good on the dry rock. A um, couple clips in there, you see that it was running, you know, these stock tires. And it did really well. And they are bead locks um, stock. They're just, you know, some cheap plastic bead locks, but they are bead locks. So you could always get a decent set of foams put inside of there and probably have some pretty good wheels and tires. One of my main things is I wanted to put some weight in it um, because it seemed a little light in the front. It seems a little light overall it wants to it's a little top heavy um i, I guess because of this higher body you know it sits kind of high and so it does want to tip fairly quick sometimes you got to be careful with it so i'll put a little weight in these wheels i'm probably going to put some in the rear also i think it'll really help it out i may play around with trying to lower this a tiny bit and eventually if i'm going to hang on to this thing i'm going to probably change this body Unless I just decide to uh, give it to Liam and let him go with it. Overall, pretty solid. I haven't broken anything on it. At one point, I didn't catch it on video. I wish I had. This thing <laughs> fell off of like, I mean, it was at least a straight eight foot drop down to rock. Like nothing there. It didn't roll. It just rolled off a cliff and dropped like probably eight, at least eight feet because I had to figure out how I was going to get down there and get it. Man, how are you going to get that? Right there? Yeah, it just started from here. Too bad it didn't land on the wheels. You could just roll, drive it up here somehow. Oh, it'll go. Yeah, you got to drive that up here somehow. If you can get it over. I may end up down there the same way it did. <laughs> oh, that. Servo's broke. No. Yeah, keep doing that, it might. Oh! <laughs> now. Find a way to get up. Holy crap. <laughs> but, it, you know, it smacked the ground. I think that's when the lights came loose. That's why I thought I'd messed them up, but it just came loose from the receiver. But overall, nothing else broke. I haven't broken anything on it yet. So, maybe it will next time out. Maybe it won't. I don't know. But I can say my Gen 8, which now it was, a, it was a version one. I've almost bulletproofed it now with parts and stuff. But the first 10 times I took my Gen 8 out, something broke. <laughs> and I still have things go wrong with it to this day. Um, I just ran it the other day when I was running this and my slipper was loose and just minor things. That's, that's nothing. But the first... I would almost bet 10 times I took it out, something broke. I broke the axle housing. I broke whatever. I've broke uh, where the shocks mount onto the axle housing. The screws stripped out the housing. Just, it's I call it my gen hate because I hate the thing sometimes, but I really like it also. So I'm just like, I don't know. So far, this has been better as far as durability out of the box and it's straight out of the box of course it's it's way more capable now it don't look as good as a gen 8 a gen 8 is more of a scale truck but i'm gonna measure these links and look around trying to find some arch links maybe to swap out there like i said get this body down a little bit if i could get it to sit down like that that would be nice shorten up the shocks or move them i haven't even looked at shock placement options so we'll do that you guys let me know what you think about this thing i mean i know it's not for the hardcore like capra owner type you know i mean i own a capra and this wouldn't be my first choice to go buy if i didn't have a crawler for me personally not being new to the hobby not being new to crawling I would just buy a Capra. I recommend it to everybody. For but you know, not everybody wants to spend the four fifty, five hundred bucks, whatever. And you know, if this was like 
probably 250, the 200, 250 range, it would be amazing in my opinion. At 300, it's almost pushing its limit because it's just, if it had the aftermarket support even, that would help it. But being it is what it is at 300 bucks, it's kind of that iffy range. So to me, on a scale of 10, this thing right now is probably like a six, um, just for the fact that it has no aftermarket support. It's super capable, maybe a seven, somewhere in there, because it, like I said, it, it, it does some amazing stuff that I, I was surprised it would do stock, but it, it is what it is. You're not going to find high clearance links for this. You're not really even going to find axles, drive shafts, any of that that's aftermarket. You're going to have to find low C stuff. And that could be an issue later because sometimes low C stuff gets a little hard to find. Um, just because their dealers are kind of limited. But overall, I'm impressed with it, honestly. If it had the aftermarket, it would be a, a really good contender for my top pick for a beginner truck. Just because it is so capable it i don't know what else to say about it i hope the shocks that's not an issue we can just tighten those up and they'll stop leaking I'm definitely gonna have to change the servo it is horrible but other than that i think this would be a really good truck you could pick up for one of your kids or something that's going to be very capable slap a servo on it maybe some weight up front at least or wheel weights or something like that not sure if there's any way you could get like i mean you can always weight the inside of the rim with like some uh, wheel weights you know car wheel weights or people do all kinds of stuff but get a little weight down low maybe lower it just a hair and i think the kids will really enjoy it so um it's not 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 definitely not somebody who for somebody that's like a hardcore crawler fan just for the fact that i feel like anybody who's hardcore into this hobby wants to customize and there are no options really unless you want to hand build it all it has these all plastic links so you know that's kind of a eh, whatever kind of a downfall got these plastic steering links i did um, check i think i can make my gen 8 links work up here so if i ever have an issue with those i think i can swap those out so that's a few things you can change out the cool thing about it is the worm gears make for super smooth slow crawl capability it is the smoothest slow crawl truck out of the box i think i've ever owned and you know, barring you buy like a Gen 8 with an axe system in it or something. Obviously, that's a censured brushless setup. It's going to be better. But I don't know that the slow speed crawl is any better than this, honestly. It's really good. It's I have the Fusion in my Capra and I have the um, axe system in my Gen 8. And this is every bit as smooth on slow speed crawl. And I think it's a lot to do with those worm gears because it's not high-end electronics at all. But it works. So that's really cool. Like I said, overall, a really good starter truck if you don't plan on customizing it at all. Um, you know, my father-in-law, he's, he's kind of like that. He wants to buy something that's good and that he likes. And then he don't want to have to, you know, mess with it. He'll he'll usually put some tires on something, and that's it. Like he, but, and that's just the way he likes to do it. He don't like messing with them and working on them and stuff. And and that's that's the cool thing about this hobby. You you can just get them and run them if that's what you want to do, or you can do like I do. As soon as I get it, I'm changing everything and <laughs> just going nuts. And so you know, if you're that type of person, I think this is a great way to go. 
much better than my Gen 8 version 1. Because, like I said, it was breaking everything. Steering was all jacked up. Servo was not very good. Um, it was better than Red Cat usually is, but still wasn't good. And just a lot of issues with my Gen 8. I love the thing, but I hate it. So, um, so yeah, I don't know. It's a hard call. It's It's not... Like I said, it wouldn't be my first choice to just buy if I didn't have anything right now. Having owned what I have, you know, it would be down the line a little bit. But honestly, as far as capabilities, this thing is really good out of the box. So take that for what you want. Um, let me know what you guys think about it. And should we customize this thing and, like, see what all it can do? Maybe even change electronics in it, give it some more power, because it's lacking on the power. Um, that's one thing that holds it back. Or should I clean it up, sell it to my father-in-law for cheap, because he's wanting one, let him enjoy it, and move on. Y'all let me know. All right, I appreciate everybody watching. Peace.